Now in this video I wanted to spend some time quickly reviewing the major things that you should know about climate before you start talking about ecosystems and this is actually very important so make sure that if you don't know any of the things which I'm about to mention watch the optional lecture series about climate about for that thing so that you can review how it works but in fact for biology's sake it's less important to know how these things work and more important to know um, what they actually do for the ecosystem. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on this video. I'm going to do a quick review about it. But remember, the ecosystems of the world is going to be based on two main factors of climate. It's going to be based on the temperature of the ecosystem and on the precipitation level or the amount of water that exists there. And the thing is that there's a lot of different things which can play with that, with the amount of heat that the area receives and with the amount of water that the area receives. But depending on those two factors, you're going to determine whether the ecosystem is going to be one way or the other. And we're going to talk about that as we go to the topics in this lecture series but some of the things that you should know first of all is that climate and weather are not exactly the same thing that weather of course is the current conditions and climate is more like a long-term thing and the interesting thing is that everywhere in the world there's a certain pattern of climate there's like a, a tropical area that's in the middle of the world the temperate area which is above and below that and polar areas which are in the north and south poles but then you also have variations within those areas because each area of the world within the tropical areas has a specific amount of water a specific amount of heat distribution winds and other factors which change the, the situation so for example in the tropical area you would have a desert or a rainforest they're both tropical why is it that one place is a desert and the other is rainforest well there's a lot of reasons really these are the main factors which will affect climate first the amount of sunlight that an area receives is going to be important the amount of solar energy both the intensity and the exposure to sunlight will matter and this is of course is going to depend on the latitude or how close you are to the equator and the seasons because throughout the year this will change how much the energy you're receiving from the sunlight will change also the amount of absorption pattern that of that certain area will also make a difference land tend to absorb heat more readily than water does water does not like to change temperature so if you're close to the water you it's going to be a little less hot and also that's also going to create a differential between the heat of the land and the heat of the water it's going to cause wind patterns and other things like that it's going to affect the weather also ice is very reflective so as much ice that you have in the planet the better if you have less ice more energy is actually going to be absorbed by the earth and it gets even warmer so as the world warms up and more and more ice melts it actually makes the world even warmer because that last energy is being reflected by the ice which is so reflective also finally life also absorbs some of the energy and that's part of the reason why land is so easy to heat up is because all the plants and everything else that's living in the surface of the land tends to absorb more heat than uh, water does so what remember those things are doing photosynthesis so they were actually trap the heat so these are heat absorption patterns which will matter and because of these heat absorption patterns you're gonna get all sorts of different things you're gonna get land and ocean breezes for example you're gonna get mountain and valley breezes and more important than knowing how this works and it does work with like convection cells differences in pressure and density and all that stuff it's to know that what they do is that they distribute heat around so winds distribute heat around and similar patterns are going to happen in terms of seasonal winds which act almost the same way but then instead of actually like day and night with the way the local winds work this works for a whole summer or a whole winter and create things like monsoons which of course are going to affect the climate of our area you also have long-term effects like that which are based on solar cycles you know sometimes the Sun is more intense than others like the El Nino and the La Nina when the Sun is more intense the Pacific absorbs more heat and then it makes the earth warm up and more water evaporates more rains things like that meanwhile La Nina will be drought when the Sun is at low intensity I know it's kind of confusing low intensity equals drought but that has to do with the amount of water that's evaporating out of the surface of the earth and making more rain so like with a solar it peak makes more rain and that's kind of like a very important factor you also have global wind patterns and ocean currents both of which also distribute the heat around the world and they are all based in the same principles of what causes the local winds the monsoons and the El Niño and La Niña has to do with difference in heating the center of the world is hot heat up more than the corners are which means the middle is a low pressure zone and the tops are a high pressure zone so the winds will circulate from poles to equator and from the equator back to poles and as they do that 
they will carry the warmth of the equator towards the poles and the cold of the poles towards the equator, which makes the temperature of the world a lot more mild than they would be. Otherwise, the equator would be a lot hotter than it is and the poles would be a lot colder than they are if it wasn't for these things. So again, global winds and ocean currents, very important in distributing the heat. So all of these things which I just talked about have to do with how much energy is being absorbed or by least by certain areas. Land versus water versus ice versus uh, life. Um, the equator versus the poles, the summer versus the winter, or the land versus the water, or the Pacific Ocean at different times during the solar maximum or minimum. All of these things have to do with absorbing or releasing heat at different levels, creating convection cells that distribute the heat around the world. Another thing is the topography of an area. As you go higher and higher in the atmosphere, the climate gets colder and colder, and that's going to make so that mountains have peculiar patterns where as you go higher and higher in the mountains, the climate is changing and it's going to change the ecosystem in response to the fact that it's getting colder and it, that happens because as you go higher the air thins out and the molecules hit each other less and it actually happens at a constant rate every 100 meters you go up drops by about one degree and this makes it so that the climate of the mountains actually is colder atop than it is down below and that's an important factor as well topography which is the shape of the land also affects the distribution of the water that's coming from the oceans the rain because the, sometimes the mountains will block the rain and it will force the clouds to rise over them but then they get to the colder air and they rain down before they get a chance to go to the other side all the water is already gone which means on the side that faces away from the water it's going to be a lot dry and that's why in places like California it's moist near the oceans but on the other side you got a desert like Sierra Nevada this is called the rain shadow effect that's also important for ecosystems you also have the greenhouse effect very important there's the, very good actually we want the greenhouse effect otherwise it will be too cold at night water methane gas and carbon dioxide all of these things are going to be trapping heat from the sun and these things are naturally in our atmosphere methane comes from digestion and decomposition which are natural processes carbon dioxide comes from volcanic eruptions forest fires decomposition cell respiration all of these things so natural process and water is also a greenhouse gas and of course water cycle water evaporates goes to the atmosphere normal process as well so a lot of normal processes will create these greenhouse gases naturally so that it's part of the ecosystem and it's actually a good thing because they trap the energy of the sun so the sun blasts the earth during the day and then during the night it doesn't so it would be too cold if it wasn't for the greenhouse gases they act like a blanket that keeps the heat in during the night time so we don't freeze to death but if you add too much of a blanket then the world warms up and it's called global warming and that's happening for a lot of reasons, but part of the reasons is because more carbon dioxide, methane gas, and other things like that are being added to the atmosphere, which is causing the, the, the world to change. Part of the reason for that is because humans are increasing the amount of forest fires, they are cutting down the trees which trap carbon dioxide, they are affecting the amounts of emissions of carbon dioxide through things like factories and, and cars and all kinds of other things and the methane also is being produced in massive amounts because cows and herds and all the animals that we grow are constantly putting out methane gas from their digestive processes believe it or not gas from cl clouds actually makes more of an impact than all the cars of the world's combined when you put all that together, the world is warming up more than it should through the greenhouse effect, and that's a problem because the greenhouse effect is becoming out of control. And remember, the hotter the world gets, the more water evaporates, and water is a greenhouse gas, so it will trap even more heat. And then the ice starts to melt, and the ice reflects heat, so it's going to be even worse then. And then there's also underneath the ice in the polar regions, there's a lot of methane tra trapped. And I talked about that in another video when I talk about the permafrost, and we'll, and we'll revisit that. But then it, methane gas is a greenhouse gas, even more hot. Need, and then before you know, the world is warming up a lot. And if that keeps going the direction that it's going, it's going to be a big deal. Proximity to water also matters. If you're, if you're close to water, you're going to be close to those breezes. You're going to be close to the ocean currents, which are either bringing heat or cold to you. They're going to bring water. They're going to bring rain. Uh, it's going to be more mild temperatures than if you were somewhere else. It's going to be more humid. So, of course, proximity and access to water will also change the way the ecosystem looks. Life will change the ecosystem because life transpires. It puts water out of skin and the leaves of plants. Also, all of these things evaporate from their surfaces, right? From our skin, we sweat and, and plants put water off their leaves. And what that does is that adds water to the ecosystem. And in fact, things like, things like the rainforest are like this. They're, it rains a lot because of the life that's there. Life also tends to absorb heat, so if you don't have the life, that would change. You all, life also tends to put out greenhouse gases through cellular respiration and methane of the digestion process, and also through decomposition, which creates both things. 
and life of course is going to make a big difference then for the ecosystem so if the life amount of life in a, in a place changes you're going to change the amount of water that's available you're going to change the amount of greenhouse gases you're going to change the amount of heat absorption you change the climate so believe it or not the climate of a region actually depends on the amount of life that lives in that place finally human activity is changing climate and i talked a little bit about that already through all the things that we do forest fires combustion engines factories uh, herds of cows uh, cutting down trees you know all the things that we do we are end up changing the ecosystem and that's going to be a big issue if we continue to go into this direction and then i also talked about the idea of microclimate because of all these factors every single place that you look at is going to have a peculiar kind of climate Say, for example, on top of the water, it's there by that beach, it's going to be a little more mild than it will be inward in the land. It's going to be less humid in the land. It's going to be, there's less trees there, too, if you see all those buildings. So it's going to be absorbing more heat, and it's going to be a lot more dry as well. Where the trees are, it's going to be humid, but under the trees, it's going to be nice because the trees block the sunlight and absorb a lot of the heat. So under the trees, it's going to be nice and mild. Those mountains in the back, it'll be cold on top of the mountains because the higher you go, the cooler it gets. And it'll be raining a lot close to the mountains because they block the rain which is coming from the water. So as you see, each place here has its peculiar type of climate because each place has a peculiar kind of condition. We call that microclimate. Now, putting all of this together, we also talk about many reasons why there's global climate change. And we talk about the fact that climatologists collect a lot of types of data, including ice cores, sediments, tree rings, fossil records, past data from, from computerized data and historical records. And with that, they research and create models of, to predict what's happening to the climate. And we know there's actually a lot of reasons why climate change could happen. We know that the sun could change, it could put on more energy, the orbit of the Earth could change, the Earth wobbles, which also affects the climate, earthquakes could release gases from deep inside the Earth, volcanoes can release gases and, or, and also fumes which trap the, trap the sunlight and it will cause the climate to be colder. Meanwhile, all the gas they put out could be greenhouse gases that could also make the world warmer. Plate tectonics, move the contents around, changes the distribution patterns of the heat, it changes the global winds, it changes the currents of the oceans, it adds new mountains to block rain, all of those things will change the climate of the region. Areas which are now cold used to be tropical rainforests when the contents used to be in other positions. The greenhouse effect, it might change. With the more, if the greenhouse effect changes, the global climate change. The amount of life in the, in the ecosystem makes the climate change. Um, Human activity makes the climate change. When you put all of that together, you can't say that the current patterns of climate change are being caused by humans. But it is true, though, that recently we've seen patterns of increase in climate. Now, throughout the history of the Earth, and that's what you're seeing in the top left, climate does oscillate. There's hot periods and there's cold periods. So throughout the millions of years of the history of the Earth, there's records that the temperatures oscillates naturally. So you can't really say that what's happening right now is caused by humans. It could just be part of a whole natural cycle. But an interesting thing is that it normally it takes millions of years for the Earth's temperature to, to change a lot, to change substantially. But in a matter of just a few hundred years, the Earth's temperature has changed substantially. And that's what you see on the top right. For thousands of years, the Earth's temperature was pretty much constant. But in the last few hundred years, the temperature has skyrocketed a lot more. And this is a pattern that's got even worse in the last 40 years. That was the little graph in the, in the left side under the first graph is showing you. But it's true, though, that the temperatures are only increasing by one or two degrees over the last 100 years, but that is already a big deal. So just so you know, a five-degree difference would be cataclysmic for the Earth. So that's why we have to have, be a little more responsible and think really hard about what we're doing to the planet. And if we have any part on this, we should do whatever we can to stop it and be conscientious about it and stop uh, producing so much greenhouse effects. Try to reduce our carbon footprint by using less resources, reusing, recycling, reducing, and try to use better technology that consumes less resources, put out less greenhouse effect, uses less energy, so that we can sustainably live in our planet and stop hurting it as much as we do. Otherwise, the consequences will be dire. That is a flash review of the climate factors that you need to know in order to understand ecosystems. If there's anything that I talked about that you don't fully understand and you would like a little further explanation about it, I suggest you watch the extra lecture series where I talk about climate and you can see each of those things in more detail. But remember that um, these 
factors and more important to know what they do than how they work. So, and this is what this video is about. I told you about what each of the things does to change the climate of a region. You probably won't be tested very hard on this. Maybe how life affects climate, definitely on the greenhouse effect, def on rain shadow, and definitely on global climate change. But at the end of the day, the most important thing to know is that several things will mess with the temperature and the amount of precipitation that a certain area receives, which will make the climate of that area unique.